Cavalcade of America, starring Linda Darnell and John Hodiak. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Ted Pearson. Tonight, our original cavalcade play, The Blue Cockade, is a love story of the American Revolution. Now, in the principal roles of this romantic and exciting drama, we present two of Hollywood's most popular stars, John Hodiak and Linda Darnell. Cockade, starring Linda Darnell as Temperance Wick and John Hodiak as George Mitchell on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Town, New Jersey, at the encampment of General Anthony Wayne's Pennsylvania Line troops, a revolt is stirring. All right, men, all right. Congress is paying a bonus to recruits, to newcomers who didn't go through a Valley Forge, a Brandywine, a Monmouth. We've been in this war for four years and we get nothing. We want to re-en- re- re-sign, re-enlist, and that way get bonuses ourselves, but we can't. Most of you couldn't read when you made your marks on those enlistment papers. You didn't know you signed up for the whole war. So now they won't let us re-enlist and get the bonus. Our officers won't even let us present our grievance. Well, what are we going to do about it? I say revolt. Go through the countryside. Make our demands, just demands known. And then on to Philadelphia and present our grievance to Congress itself. Are you with me? was George Mitchell, the leader of this revolt. And the men do what he suggests. They swarm over the Morristown countryside, up and down Jockey Hollow. But the people do not receive them kindly. Get off my farm! Get off or I'll shoot! There's even terror in the farmhouses of New Jersey. For the men need food as well as understanding and support. And they take it where they must. In one of those farmhouses near Morristown, there is no man. For the farmer, Henry Wick, is dead. And his wife sits there alone, rocking, as her daughter Temperance comes into the room. Are you comfortable now, Mother? Yes, thank you, Temperance. All right. I'll be back soon. Tempe, what do you mean? Well, I mean I'll be back soon, Mother. Just where do you think you're going? To Dr. Liddell to get your medicine. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Tempe, the whole countryside is alive with mutineers. But you're sick, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, Mother, you are a caution. You need the medicine, and I'm going to get it for you. But what are you going to do if you run into mutineers? Well, don't you suppose I can take care of myself? Well, they're just soldiers, just human beings. You think they're like the soldiers that have stopped here to water their horses? You think they're like that, oh, what was his name? Captain Roger Good? Yes, the one who stayed for supper. The one you made the blue cockade for. What? How did you know I did that? I saw him ride away with it was pretty, with the blue ribbon and the feathers. And you never said anything. It was your affair. Oh, Mother, you're wonderful. But you don't have to worry about Roger and me. That was just a flirtation. <laughs> well, not even that. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Mother. I'll be back soon. There's only one reason why I'm going to let you go. And why is that? Because I can't help myself. <laughs> you're too much like me, God bless you, Tempe. And I do need the medicine. But please be careful, Tempe. I'm worried about the mutineers. Well, don't worry, Mother. Goodbye.
What are we going to do now, George? We've got to get food from the farmhouses here about. Yeah, we sure do. I need something to eat. I'm afraid, George. The Army considers us deserters. We'll be shot if they catch us. Keep quiet, Newton. Listen to George. We're not deserters. We're men looking for our rights. We intend to go back and fight the British when we get those rights. And those rights ought to be enforced for us. If not for us, then by us. Yes, but if we're caught first... That's what we've got to prevent. Now, come on, we've got to get food. The people won't give it to us. Then we'll take it. Then to get away from those who come after us, we'll... Wait a minute. Well, think of that. Well, well, what, George? I was just going to say we need horses. And look, here comes one our way. A girl's riding it. All the better. I think a girl would be glad to give up a horse to... Well, there's such a handsome trio. Oh, no. I don't like preying on women. Keep quiet. If you want to keep from being captured, you'd better stop this girl. Come on now, spread out across the road. Here she comes. Out of my way! Whoa there! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Out of my way! Get off the road! That's a good horsey. Madam, how do you do? What do you mean, stopping me this way? We're giving you an opportunity to help the cause of justice. Take your hands from my horse, soldier. May I compliment you on your horsemanship, madam? Who are you? Don't tell her. Quiet, Newton. Of course I'll tell her. She's a very charming girl. And I can tell by her eyes that she's sympathetic. I don't want you to tell me anything. I just want you to let me go. I have some influence in your Pennsylvania line troop. Indeed. Well, fair lady, is this someone you say you have influence with an officer by any chance? No, of course not. Let me go, please. Believe me, I'm sorry, but we can't. Wait a minute. Tell me something. Anything. You're being foolish, George. Where did you get that... that blue cockade you're wearing? This? You like it? I'll give it to you. This, madam, came from the hat of Captain Roger Good. The captain is our prisoner. Captain Good? You seem concerned about the captain. Uh, I'm only concerned that you should let me go. We can't. We've got to have your horse. And if I won't give it to you? Then we'll take her. We're three men against one girl, you know. We can easily take your horse from you. Yes, I... I suppose you can. Believe me, I regret the necessity. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you the horse, but, but will you return it to me sometime? All right. Where? At the Wick Farm. I'm Tempe Wick. You'll get her back, I promise. Well, are you going to step back and let me dismount? Of course. There. Go, beauty! Go, Wait! Go, go. Wait. <laughs> we can't let her get away! She knows about us! Put up that gun, you fool! Well, we can't let her get away! Don't worry, Newton. She's too pretty. You don't think I'm going to let her get away, do you? Tempe Wick. Wick Farm. Let's go. All right, Pete. Come on now. You won't like this, but come on. Yes, Beauty, you're coming into the house. Come on now. Come on. Mother? Mother? Come on, Beauty. Tempe, what are you doing? Bringing the horse into the house? The mutineers. Uh, Come on, quick. They want to take Beauty. Oh, Mother, help me get into the little bedroom. Well, I never heard of anything like this. Oh, come on, Mother. Hurry up, will you? We've got to get in here. Open the door. Come on, Beauty. Come on, Beauty, darling. We've got to get in here and hide. Come on. Dave, what is it? I told you the mutineers. Close the door. And bolt it. They're coming here? Yes, I'm sure they will. They they stopped me on the road. They want to take Beauty. Then we've got to stop Beauty from stamping around this way. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Here, I'll get the mattress. I'll help you. Oh, no. No, you're too weak. Oh, nonsense. I'll help. Oh, there. There. All right, Beauty. Come on, girl. Step up here. That's right. Help her on the mat. Well, pick up her feet. Help her. That's the girl. That's Can't me. see what's happened. Well, I told you, the mutineers are coming. If they found Beauty outside, they'd know we were here. And this way, we'll be safe. I hope we'll be safe. No, the horse isn't in the barn. That girl's gone to inform on us. We'd better get away from here. You may be right, Newton, but we need food. We'll find food in here. Come on. Oh, the place is unlocked. Let's go. Hello. You're in here. We'll find you, so you'd better just come right out and say so. 
What? Get the food and go. No, we have to know whether anyone's here. We have to know whether the girl's gone to inform on us. Come on, let's try this next room. What are we going to do with her if we find her? Make very certain that she doesn't give us away. Well, there's nobody here. Well, there's nobody in this next room. Wait a minute. Where does that door go to? Uh, locked. Here, let's see. Go in there. Open up. You hear something? Um, no, no. I heard something in there. I didn't. We ought to knock down the door. We haven't any what? time for that sort of thing. Uh, you men go down the road to the next farmhouse and see if they can give you some food. I'll look around here. I still think... Come that... on. Well, all right. Come out of there, Tempe. I know you're in there. Come out. All right. I'll let them break down the door when they come back. You leave my mother alone. She's a sick woman. I wouldn't think of harming her. Oh, you have the horse in here, too. What do you want with me? Come outside. Out to the barn where my men won't see us if they come back. Well, all right. Don't go, Tessie. I have to go, Mother. You lock the door. Very well. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Listening to The Blue Cockade, starring John Hodiak as George Mitchell and Linda Darnell as Tempress Wick on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Morristown, New Jersey, 1781. A revolt has broken out in the Pennsylvania line troops of General Anthony Wayne. A band of those soldiers in revolt have come to the farmhouse of Temperance Wick in Jockey Hollow, where Temperance talks with George Mitchell, the leader of the mutineers. Well, I'm here. What do you want to say? I wanted to talk to you. I want you to understand us. I understand you very well. You're deserters. No, we're not. You're men who prey upon lonely women. Who loot farmhouses where there are no men to protect them. Is that what you wanted to tell me? Well, I've almost forgotten what I wanted to tell you. Well, what is it? I don't care to waste time with a deserter. <laughs> you know, I like your spirit. Well, it's the spirit of a girl who loves freedom and who hates anyone that betrays the cause of freedom. And I'm one of those? And you're one of those. I see. Well, what I wanted to tell you was that I'm not one of those at all. I love freedom as much as anyone. And that's why you've revolted. Yes, by heaven, that's exactly why. Because the kind of freedom we're fighting for in this war is freedom that means just treatment. And who's treating you badly? Captain Rogers Good, perhaps? Oh, I thought you knew Captain Good. No, it's not he. It's just that we've been in this war four years. Do you think it's been easy for us soldiers? No, of course not. No, but we never complained. Until they got new troops to volunteer and promised them bonuses. They did that? That's just what they did. I, I didn't know. Well, then you're learning... No wonder Captain Good had sympathy for you. Good had sympathy for us, an officer? Well, I've <laughs> heard him say so, and, and he's right. You've been treated unfairly. That... Well, that's all I wanted you to know. Oh, but even so, the revolt now of all times when our cause needs you so badly, that's not right. Well, this whole revolution is a sort of revolt against the king, isn't it? We only want to secure our own dignity and freedom. Well, it's, it's very difficult for a girl to understand, I suppose, but I, I think I see. Um... Tempe. Yes? Are you in love with Captain Good? Oh, gracious, no. I'm glad. Why? Have you done something to him? Well, then you are in love with him. You're worried about him. Well, I'm worried about him, yes, but I'm not in love with him. I'm not in love with anyone. Well, we haven't harmed Captain Good. We're only holding him as a hostage. Where? Never mind, but he's safe. Does that relieve your mind about the great Captain Good? Yes, it does. Do you know why I asked you to come out here? No. I had to be sure that you wouldn't inform on us. Well, how can you be sure of that? Simply by asking you not to. You understand what we're doing, don't you? I've explained it to you. Yes. Then you won't inform on us. You're very sure of yourself. I'm very sure of you.
Come here. Yes? Give me a kiss. You're very bold, too. Oh, I wouldn't want you to kiss me unless you wanted to. Well, I don't want to, I assure you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was hoping you would want to. I was hoping that you could find it in yourself to worry about me as well as Captain Good. Well, I am worried about you. What are you going to do? What will happen to you? First, my friends and I are going to bring food to the other revolters. Then we're going to march down the Basking Ridge Road to confront Congress in Philadelphia. We're going to tell them what we want. Well, I... I'm sorry you told me that. Why? Because I... I like you. You do? But I'm... I'm loyal to the colonist cause, and your revolt threatens it. You're not going to do anything about it, are you? Are you? Well, I... I haven't made up my mind yet. I could take your horse from you, you know. Well, then I would make up my mind very fast. <laughs> That's the girl. Well, I've uh, got to leave now. The others will be looking for me. I'm going to take some food from your house. Do you mind? We need food very badly. Please take it. And you'd better stay here until we're gone. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, what's your name? George. Just George? Well, maybe when this war is over, I'll come back to this farmhouse and I'll add a name to that George. But for now... Goodbye, Tempe. Goodbye. Uh, George? Yes? Uh, come here. Uh, here. Here's the kiss you wanted. Good luck. General Wayne, sir? Yes? There's a girl here who says she has news of Captain Roger Good. She has? Sure in. Come in here, young lady. Thank you. Uh, are you General Wayne? Uh, yes. Uh, that's our lieutenant. Yes, General. Well, then, young lady, what's your name? My name is Temperance Wick, sir. Oh? What news do you have about Captain Good? Well, he's being held hostage by the mutineers, sir. Yes, I know that. Yes, sir, but well, the real reason I came, I, I couldn't tell them out there was to tell you that, that the mutineers plan to march down the Bassing Ridge Road to Philadelphia and present their demands to Congress. Oh, they do, do they? Yes, sir. Well, we'll put a stop to that. Oh, I hope you won't, sir. What? You hope I won't? Then why did you come here and tell me? Well, because I'm loyal to the cause you're fighting for, sir. Then uh, why do you want me to do nothing? Because I think those mutineers are loyal, too, sir. Because I think their cause is just. The cause of mutineers can't be just. But it is, sir. Really, it is. I don't think you could say that if you realized how serious mutiny is. I like my men. They're excellent soldiers. But when they mutiny, what else should I do but issue an order? But I, I think you should go see the men and, and listen to them and, and... And? And then go with them to plead their grievance. Oh, General Wayne, they just want to be paid as the new recruits are paid. They want the bonuses that the new recruits got. At least they want to be heard on the matter. They believe that they've fought for that right, along with others. Well, you sound very sincere, young lady, but uh, I can't believe that's all they want. Well, why don't you talk to them and, and learn for yourself, sir? Oh, well, perhaps I should. Very well. I'll ride out in the woods and meet those men. Come along. <laughs> I see. Company! Halt! It's Anthony Wayne riding toward us. I Anthony know it. Wayne, Company! Attention! All right, men, let me do the talking. Who's in charge here? I am General Wayne. Is what this girl tells me true? How do you do, Miss Wick? Oh, please, uh, I couldn't help it. I had to tell the general. Indeed. Answer my question. Is it true? Are you marching to Philadelphia to see Congress? We are, General Wayne, and while we respect you, sir, you're not going to stop us. You have Captain Roger Good as a hostage. Yes, sir. Chester, bring Captain Roger Good. Right, sir. General Wayne, I'm going to release Roger Good, but not for the sake of this girl. I want that understood. Only because I like you, General, and because I like the captain. Uh, here's Captain Good. Fine. Captain Good, you're free. And, sir, I return you your blue cockade with apologies for having taken it. 
Now, Captain, go to your lady. <laughs> You're mistaken, George. Miss Wick is not my lady. Of course not. And as for the cockade, keep it. I think it led you to luck and fortune and a very pretty girl. Well, uh... Well, you're free at any rate, Captain. General Wayne, please, sir. Yes, Captain? Now that I'm free, General, I want you to know that I'm going to make a free choice. I'm going to continue to march with these men. Oh, what? You, Captain, putting in with these deserters? Sir, if you would only talk with these men, you would understand why. Uh, you. You, leader. Yes, sir. Are you marching to Philadelphia? We are, sir, this minute. Stand aside, General. What if the enemy over in New York cares about this defection and marches out? Who will defend Morristown, this headquarters? How do I know you will not even desert to the British? We won't go to the British. We'd hang any man who'd attempt it. That's a good answer, soldier. But we want our rights just the same and now. Right. Soldiers have to sleep in mud and eat when they can and fight when they'd rather sleep. If they're good soldiers, they do these things without complaint. General Wayne, I'm afraid you don't understand us and what we're doing here. No? No, sir. We've had mud plenty for a long time now. Have you heard us complain? No, I haven't. And when the cold bit into us and we didn't have overcoats, did we cry about it? Oh, you joked about it. And we still joke about it. And if it happens to us again, we'll joke about it some more. But you're marching down to Philadelphia to complain. Not to complain about mud, not to complain about cold, not to complain about food. Then about what? About money, General, and nothing else. Hmm. And I guess what this young lady has been telling me is true. She, she's been telling she's been me... She's been telling me a great deal as we rode. I didn't believe her. Tell this man what you said to me, Tempe. Oh, I, I said that all you wanted was the same treatment the new recruits got. The bonuses that are being given to the new recruits. And by Jove, if that's all, I'll march to Philadelphia with you myself. If you won't let me lead you, I'll follow you there and present your case to the Congress. <laughs> Thank you, General Wayne. But we'd feel better about it if you stayed at your post here in Morristown. And we'll be knowing that when we, re we return, it'll be to your command again, sir. Very well. Then I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. However, I give you one order. Hurry back. Very good, sir. Fall in, men. Forward! Forward! Goodbye, Tempe. George, remember what I said about how I felt about you? I remember. Well, it's still true. I I love you, darling. But please carry out orders this time and hurry back. Don't worry, we will. Darling, I've got to go now. Just wait for me, will you? Oh, I will, George. I will. Goodbye, Tempe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, my darling. The so-called mutiny of the Pennsylvania line, an affirmation of men's faith in the American guarantees of freedom, the right to be heard, to express a grief. In this instance, Congress listened to these battle-weary veterans, and because their request was practicable and overdue, it was granted. Never faltering in their dedication to the fight for independence, these American soldiers made sure that a doctrine of free men, the right to petition, was not thwarted that critical winter of 1781 when the Pennsylvania soldiers in Washington Army were encamped near Morristown, New Jersey. Cavalcade will present the distinguished star of stage and screen, Paul Muni. Our play, Garden Key, 
dramatizes the great story of Dr. Samuel Mudd, the Maryland physician who was imprisoned for complicity in the assassination of President Lincoln. Be sure to join Cavalcade next week, then, for Garden Tea, starring Paul Muni. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Blue Cockade, was an original radio play written by Robert Senadella. The program was directed by Jack Zoller. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Garden Key, starring Paul Muni. Cavalcade of America comes to you each week from the stage of the Longacre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Linda Darnell appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of When My Baby Smiles at Me, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. John Hodiak appeared through courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of The Three Musketeers, starring Lana Turner, Gene Kelly, and June Allen. <laughs>